The more we peer into the cogs and inner workings of the universe, the stranger and more confusing it becomes. Time and time again we think we know something, and then something else comes along to completely dismantle our previous understanding. Therefore, it's a bit surprising to find the sinister-sounding dark matter is a truly mundane and rather placid entity. It's natural to look around and want to be able to explain the world with what you see. When finding something that's not logical or doesn't quite make sense, humans are notorious for creating an explanation without rigorous validation. In the astronomical world, one thing that doesn't make sense with the world around us is the orbital speeds of stars and galaxies. If we look at our solar system, then planets tend to orbit at a predictable speed. As a planet is further from the sun, the influence of gravity weakens and thus it's easier for a planet to just mosey on away from the solar system. In order to stick around, it needs to be moving equally slow compared to the sun's gravity, and we see a nice trend. We would then expect the galaxy to be the same. The further you are from its center, the less you feel the influence of gravity, and thus the slower you must travel. Yet by observing the Doppler shift of stars further and further from the galaxy's center, we can see that, why, they all kind of move the same speed. This is of course impossible with our old understanding of matter and physics. Something else has to be holding these stars in place to prevent them from flying away. There are a bunch of wonderful videos to explain how we know dark matter exists, and I've linked them in the description. Today, I want to explain our best guess as to what it could be, or infer its properties based on observations. It's quite boring, yet equally fascinating. Everything I'm going to describe is based on the assumption that dark matter is similar to everything else in our universe. That is, it is an excitation in a yet undiscovered quantum field. There's no way to prove whether it is or isn't, but let's just say it'd be really freaking weird if it wasn't. Although I'm presenting the following as facts, these are all contingent on dark matter being another quantum object. A dark matter particle has zero electric charge. That means it doesn't interact with any other charged particles, be that photons, electrons, or protons. This is where the dark from its name comes from. No interaction with light means no light to give off. On top of not interacting with traditional matter, it's quite clear it doesn't seem to want to interact with itself. Everywhere we look, normal matter tends to stick together if given the opportunity due to electromagnetism or the strong force. This is why stars and planets form. Dark matter, however, doesn't interact or attract with itself or any other matter. It just seems to flow wherever its path in space-time, and therefore gravity takes it. Since there are no interactions with other particles that we know of, then that probably means all dark matter is what we call cold. There's nothing to give them excess energy to cause them to speed up or slow down outside of relative motion due to gravity. They simply exist. We know dark matter interacts with gravity, so one would then expect them to attract each other, create more gravitational attraction, which then attracts more dark matter, which then creates more attraction, and this process would spiral out of control. But we need to step back and realize why something gets stuck in a gravity well in the first place. When we roll a ball down a well, why does it get stuck in the middle? Friction, of course, slows it down until it doesn't have enough kinetic energy to leave. The same thing happens in space. Our theoretical object interacts with other matter, which causes it to lose energy and become trapped in the gravity well. But dark matter doesn't interact. There's nothing to keep it in the gravity well. Dark matter accelerates down with gravity, and then subsequently rises back up and continues on its merry way. Therefore, any dark matter attracted to a gravitationally dense area would leave it just as fast as it arrived, unless its current path happens to be at the correct angle to be caught in an orbit. This means dark matter is just a free-flowing entity, truly a wanderer of the universe with no ambition. But what else can we infer about it? A dark matter particle is also incredibly stable. Since it doesn't interact with anything, and there's currently no understandable way we would produce more or less of it. So all of the dark matter in our universe would be left over from its initial creation. This stability also suggests if it can be created, it would require a lot of energy. 
Those are the only two things we can be almost certain of if dark matter is in fact a quantum object. It doesn't interact with or want to interact with anything, and it's fundamentally cold, thus its only motion is due to relativity and gravity. How would we discover it then? There are two main theories. The first is that dark matter is what is known as a WIMP, a weakly interacting massive particle. Or in English, a particle with large mass whose only means of interacting with other matter is through the weak force. This is plausible because the weak force is only prevalent at extremely, extremely short distances. We're talking distances of a tenth to a hundredth the diameter of a proton. That means our dark matter would need to pass essentially exactly and perfectly with the accuracy of tenths of a femtometer through another particle in order to be detected. And this is currently how we're trying to detect WIMP dark matter. In simple terms, we observe a vat of liquid xenon in an isolated environment. If any of the xenon produces any kind of energy or light, then something must have given them that energy by bumping into them. Because it's isolated from other sources of energy, we hope that it will mean dark matter bumped into one of the xenon atoms. However, when considering the scale and precision of such an event occurring, the difference between a particle that only interacts with the weak force and a particle that doesn't interact with anything is fairly negligible. We can see this with neutrinos. Neutrinos are fundamental particles that are birthed from and only interact with the weak force. So they are really hard to detect, but we can with great effort. A neutrino detector looks like this, 40 meters tall and 40 meters in diameter. Now you yourself have a couple hundred trillion neutrinos flying through your body at the moment, mostly from the sun. With this massive, massive detector, we're only able to detect about five or six neutrinos a day. That's how rare it is to interact. When we compare the number of neutrino particles in the universe to how many are predicted would be for a WIMP candidate, we find that there would be about 10 billion to a trillion times more neutrinos than WIMPs. So if dark matter is a WIMP, and it interacts in the same manner as a neutrino, then instead of five to six detections a day, we are looking at perhaps five to six detections since the start of the universe. This is the truly boring nature of WIMP dark matter. Even if we discover its existence, it still won't change how absolutely inert and passive its behavior is. The second dark matter candidate is actually a theoretical particle for solving another problem in physics but its existence could also explain dark matter. The axion. The axion is a particle that solves the strong charge parity problem. I won't go into a lot of depth of what this means, but basically we have a bunch of rules in the quantum world. These rules dictate how the fundamental forces should interact. In some cases, these rules can be violated. The combination of charge and parity symmetry shouldn't be able to be broken, and in most cases, this is true. But there are experiments that demonstrate that the weak force can, and sometimes will, defy all conventions and violate CP symmetry. The strong force should also be able to violate CP symmetry, yet for some reason doesn't. The axion, if existed, would serve as an arbiter for strong charge parity symmetry, and whenever the strong force is about to violate it, it would step in and say, hey, don't do that. An axion would be a quantum field of extremely light and extremely abundant particles, akin to the abundance of photons and neutrinos. Axions would also possess no charge and would only interact with matter through gravity and the strong and weak force. Quite similar to the proposed WIMP dark matter, except with tiny mass. Everything regarding dark matter is of course purely theoretical because, well, we don't know. We assume it's a quantum object because, I mean, everything else is. But it very well could not be. And that's fascinating. It could be an axion. It could be a wimp. It could be both. And it could be neither. When we look around at the strength of the fundamental forces, it seems a miracle that anything exists at all. If the strong force was just a tiny bit stronger, then stars would fuse so fast as to exhaust their fuel in seconds. If the weak force was just a tiny bit weaker, then large atoms wouldn't exist. If gravity was either a bit weaker or a bit stronger, 
and stars would either never form or burn out in millions instead of billions of years. Perhaps this universe has existed countless times before, each time a fundamental force just slightly off, and thus that universe as we know it failed. Perhaps this universe is a simulation and each fundamental force a finely tuned hyperparameter, and dark matter is the back end patching to stabilize it until dark energy causes its eventual collapse. Since we don't know, our imaginations can run wild, and the possibilities of why it exists and where it comes from are endlessly fascinating, even if the dark matter particle itself is quite a bore. Yeah.